Before going into more details about the pins of GWIC, which you can use to control the puppet effect, but not only the puppet effect, I'm going to show you before uh, this puppet tool in After Effects uh, and not talk about GWIC first. Because you can do a lot of stuff with it, but you have to understand how it works before that. Let's use this ghost as an example. It's a single layer, and I'm going to use the puppet tool to deform it. So I'm just going to use these puppet pin tools. There are different kinds, different types of pins, but let's use the, the default one at first. And maybe I could just add a pin to control the head, but I need several pins. One is not enough, so let's add a couple more. And as you can see, it's already quite interesting. I can already animate stuff with this. But when I move this side, maybe I need a bit more control, so I could add another pin, a third one, so I have a precise control on each part of, of this little ghost. And as you can see, with just the default values and just a few pins, it already works pretty well. When you add these default puppet pins, After Effects adds the puppet effect on the layer, with the puppet engine set to Advanced by default, which is the most recent one. And each puppet pin is a group of properties in the deform part of the mesh here, um, where you can find the position, which you can animate. Um, After Effects already adds a keyframes on them to find them quickly by just hitting U uh, to reveal them all. But here, I do want the other properties uh, and show you this pin type property just above the position for each pin. And this is what's interesting is that, for example, on the head here, I can only manipulate the position of the head. I cannot rotate it and bend it sideways. So if I just select this pin and change it to advanced, with the advanced pin, it works the same way. I can still move the ghost, but as you can see, it doesn't rotate anymore. I, but I can manually rotate the head. This is very useful, especially when you are going to use this puppet tool with GWIC which is interesting because with UAQ you have the control on position and rotation on each part. So this may be very useful, and you even can scale a little bit the pin. And I'll show you just later that this can be useful to animate the breathing of a character, for example. So this is the default puppet engine. And just you should know that you can create advanced pins at once. You don't have to change the type after the creation. You can already create them in the advanced mode. Anyway, you can still change the, the pin type at any time in the timeline. There's another type you may need, is the bent puppet pin, which only rotates, but you cannot move, uh, you can change the position. Uh, I don't use it very much, but if you need a pin which follows the other ones and can just rotate, this may be useful. So this is the bend pin. But there is another way to use the puppet tool and another puppet engine. If I'm rigging an arm now, here you will have an important difference. Let's use the, the advanced engine first. So let's just create a, a few pins. We can test different things. If I'm naively, I could just add a pin for each anchor, for each joint. And as you can see, it doesn't work at all. This is not right because the layer bends in between the two pins and I don't have a nice curve uh, with the, these pins. The, the bend is in between the anchors and not on the anchors. So one way to improve this would be, for example, to remove the middle point. You may have this bug where it doesn't work. To just switch back to the puppet tool. It works. It's a bug in After Effects. And now with only two pins like this, this is interesting, actually, because it already works like if the arm was rigged stretchy and with a kind of IK, and I could already animate this without even using GWIC. But the problem is that you don't have much control on this arm. If you'd like to move the elbow or make the arm shorter or longer, there's no way to do that because you cannot add a puppet pin in between, a third one. And you'll see also that at some point you have this flip on the arm and there's no way to tell when or why this, this will flip. That's just After Effects doing its stuff. So it may be interesting, interesting for quickly rigging an arm, but you, you can't do much with it. You could test using the advanced puppet pins to use the rotation. 
this may help, but because you have a bit more control with the rotation and combining the two rotations, you may even control the location of the elbow, but this is not ideal and it's going to be too much complicated and to rig with during. So here in this specific case, the, the legacy engine is going to be very useful. Let's create a pin on each joint this time and switch to the legacy engine. Okay. Um, that's another bug in After Effects. Sometimes uh, the puppet just doesn't do anything. It just doesn't work when you create your pins or switch to the legacy engine. It, it doesn't work at all. In this case, just save the project and reopen it. And now it works again. <clears throat> so with the, this legacy engine, as you can see, it works, it works better for this kind of limb because you have the three joints and you can control each one of them and you can move the elbow. So this is more interesting and you can do more stuff with this. And you'll see that the Puppet Engine is quite light in the latest versions of After Effects. It works fast, it's, it's great. So just to explain what's going on, when you use the Legacy Engine, what you add when you add a pin is an actual pin, like a needle stuck in the, in the fabric. If you pull it, you'll see that when I pull this pin, it's really a point, just a point I'm pulling. Really like if there was a needle and I was holding just a needle. This explains why you can't rotate the pin, because it's just a point. You, can't, you cannot rotate a, po a point. But with the, the new engine, the advanced engine, when you add a pin, it's not a pin, it's not a needle. You control the area. It's like you, if you put the hand on the fabric and not a needle. And you see that when you pull this, you manipulate an area and not a point, and not a single point. This explains why you can rotate with these pins, because what you're rotating is the area which is controlled by the pin. And this is the issue we had at first, is that inside this area, it's a bit stiff and the fabric is deformed outside in between the, the pins. But you can rotate them. So the choice of the Puppet Engine de really depends on what you're trying to do and what you want to animate. For something like this, like an arm or leg, the Legacy Engine may be better in most, most of the times. But for clothes or a torso, the Advanced uh, Engine is better. Let me show you with this uh, character. I can use this Advanced Engine to make him breathe. If I just add a, a new pin here on the torso, an advanced pin, I can use position pins to attach the, the rest of the body here on the shoulders and at the bottom of the shirt, maybe two points at the bottom here, will attach this so that I can manipulate only this torso here. And using the scale, for example, I can really easily animate this character breathing, for example. For this kind of stuff, the new advanced engine is very useful and you can use it to quickly animate limbs if you don't want too much control and want to set up your character very quickly. This new advanced engine is useful and you could use Duik only to attach the, the shoulder to the rest of the body. So this, this is very quick to rig and to animate. But if you need more details and if you need to have a better control on your character and what you're animating, in this case, uh, you're going to choose the legacy engine because you can control each part very precisely. And you can rig this with Duik. These are the differences between the two puppet engines you can use in After Effects. And now I'm going to show you how to use them with Duik. The pins in Duik are available in the third panel, Links and Constraints. You find the Add Pins button. It's really simple. These Duik pins are used to control any special property. For example, puppet pins, as we'll see later, but any other special properties like the center of this lens flare. In this composition, I have this ghost, and I'd like the lens flare to follow it, to be attached to the eye of the ghost without having to animate both of them. This flare center is a special property with its two values, X and Y. So I can, on this effect layer, select the flare center, and in Duik, click on the Add Pins button. Duik creates a new layer, which is used to control this special property. 
It's, it's just that. But it's very useful because now it's not just a property but a layer I can control. I can parent them. So I can parent this layer to the ghost. And when I move the ghost, I move the center of the land fair also. So let's just hide and lock it. And now I can animate the ghost as I wish and keep the lens flare attached to the eye. And because puppet pins are also special properties with their X and Y position and even the rotation, we'll see that, we can use the Duic pins the same way with the puppet tool. Let's create an advanced puppet pin to control the head and position pins to control the cloth here. So I can just animate this cloth. And now I can very simply use Duik, the Duik pins to control all of this. So before creating the pins, let's rename the puppet pins. And now I can just select the five pins and click on add pins in Duik. Duik creates the five new layers just above the layer which has the puppet effect. We can't see them because they're purple Let's change them so I can see them better. And you can even select them to change the color of them all at once in the options of the pins. You can select a color. Let's just copy the color I've used already to paste it on the other ones using this options panel apply. So in these options, you can change the few settings on the puppet pins like uh, you have with the bones, for example. And now I can use these layers to animate this ghost. And the one controlling the head can also control not only the position of the pin, the puppet pin, but also its rotation and even the scale, because this was an advanced puppet pin. So now I have an issue is that as I'm moving the ghost around with the puppet tool, I don't move the layer, but I deform it. So I need to link the center or lens flare, not to the layer of the ghost, but to the pin of the head, so that it will follow the pin and not the layer of the ghost. And that's very handy with these pins is that you can change the parenting at any time and it works very well. Now I have this lens flare, which follows the eye of the ghost. So, these are what the pins do. There's nothing else to know about this. They control any special property and especially puppet pins and advanced puppet pins with also the rotation and the scale. So they are very, very useful, very simple, but very useful. And next you could read this ghost using Duic bones and parenting these pins to the bones and then using the auto rig to animate the ghost and not animate each pin individually. Now I'm going to show you that these Duic pins can be used also with Bezier paths. When I'm talking about Bezier paths, I'm talking about both masks like this one on a solid and paths used in shape layers like this one on the left. So this works with both types of paths. It's really easy. If you have this kind of path and you need to animate it, for example, you need to parent the points to uh, other layers or simply animate them individually. You can just select the, the path in the timeline and then in the links and constraints panel in Duik, click on add pins. Duik creates all these layers which control each vertex of the path so that you can parent them, link them to anything to rig them or animate them more easily. What is really useful is that the tangents are attached to the points so that you can rotate the points to rotate the curve and the scale to change the curvature at this point. If the scale is 0%, it's an angle. And if you rise the value, it's like pulling the tangents. By default, both tangents are linked together so that you can animate both of them with just a single layer, if you wish. Even if I personally prefer to animate the rotation of the point, but you have this choice to animate the tangents. And on the point, you have the effect to unlock the two tangents and animate them individually if you need. 
Like for other pins in Duik, you can, of course, change their color and their size if you wish. There are a few options which may be useful. For example, if you have this kind of path without tangents, then you can create the pins without creating the tangents. Just select the path once again and hold the Alt key when you click on Add Pin. Now Duix creates only the points and not the tangents. And I have a nice tip to share about this path without tangents. If you have this kind of, of path, you can use the round corners effect in the contents of the shape layer. And if you raise the value of the radius, you can easily animate a nice curve like this, which is perfectly smooth without having to bother about the tangents at all. So if you need something really, a nice curve, very smooth like this, it's very useful to, to use this effect. So this is how you can also use the duke pins on Bezier path. And then you can do what you wish with them, for example, parenting them, like I'm doing here, like an FK rig, where you can animate each part with the rotation, like you would do usually to animate an arm, which is easier to animate with the rotations than the position of the IK. You should know also that it's possible if you need to recreate the tangents if you don't have them or if you deleted them. For each point, you have an effect. For example, if I want the tangents on this point, which is the 1, 1. In the effects of the layer with the path, in the effects, I can select the corresponding tangents for this point and add pins. And Duik creates again the two layers to control the tangents for this point. And now I can use them. Of course, you still need to parent them to the corresponding point. And then when you animate the points, you get back the same behavior with, as we had before with the rotation to control them. And you could also remove the tangents if you finally don't need them. That works. So you can create and remove the tangents at, at any, any time. This may be, may be useful. And then you can animate any kind of Bezier path really easily using these Duik pins. This is very, very powerful on vector char characters, vectorial characters, especially with the connector in Duik to automate the shape of the character depending on what he's doing. If he raises the, the arm, for example, or turns the head, right, left, up, down, you can use these pins on Bezier path to control them very precisely and connect them to any kind of automation. To put all the theory into practice, you can follow the official video course about Duik and Hela. It's available on rxlibrary.org and the link is in the description of this video.